everyone. I am Mary-Kate Luke. I'm the marketing specialist here with Hasmark Publishing International, and I am joined today by Mark Wilkinson. He is the author of Life Remixed, and we are going to be chatting today about sort of his life, how he's remixed it, and his life after release. And this is part of a new series that obviously we are doing on our Hasmark channel here, um, talking with some of our past authors about their books, sort of the process they went through, and what they're doing since release, just so we can sort of show anyone out there who's looking to sort of share their story with the world and see the possibilities that they have as an author and what they can do with that afterwards and where they can kind of take it. So Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to be chatting with you. I was hoping that you could start maybe by telling the audience a little bit about yourself and about your book. Hi, Mary Kate. Uh, thank you very much for having me uh, on this uh, on this series. Uh, yeah, life after release is uh, is fantastic. Uh, my book, Life Remixed, uh, was uh, something I've been thinking about for a long time, and uh, uh, I tried to write it a few times um, because basically I'd gone from being diagnosed with an incurable disease to uh, running marathons, and then I'd gone from bankrupt to financially free and actually those things I felt were worth sharing with the world and they're worth sharing with the world because of the things that I've learned from other books uh, and so I've learned from some fantastically wise people um, from The Secret to Bob Proctor to Louise Hay um, to Napoleon Hill you know I've, I've read all these books I've taken them in and learned about them uh, and then put it into practice. That's the big thing. Put it into practice. And so writing Life Remixed was really about intertwining my story through there, my journey of actually, right, okay, so this happened and I learned this and this is how I changed it and this is where I where I got to. Um, you know, the, the story of my life basically is I was an international DJ um, traveling the globe. I had uh, records in the top 10 with Lou Reed and David Bowie. I was resident DJ at Ministry of Sound when I was 25, travelled to 65 countries, been all over the globe um, with uh, some fantastic times uh, and also some huge addictions uh, to sex, drugs and house music, basically. Um, and uh, it was it was fun while it lasted, I suppose you could say that, but eventually uh, karma dealt with me and uh, I collapsed one day uh, and put me on the floor. And I couldn't walk for about 18 months off the back of that. I became suicidal. Things got very, very dark. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, if I, I started to learn some information. The secret said, Bob Proctor said in there, dis-ease is two words. You must hyphenate uh, the dis-ease and you cannot have a dis-ease if you're at ease. So I was like, whoa, hang on a minute. So I need to learn a lot more stuff here while I was getting better and recovering my life from incurable disease and bankruptcy, I um, thought to myself, if I can do this and do it well, then I need to write a book and I will write a book and I will put it out there into the world and share it with other people so that they don't have to go through what I went through in order to learn how to be really happy, healthy uh, and very wealthy. Um, and so that's what I've done. Absolutely. And your story, it's obviously it's so deeply personal. You've sort of obviously just told us a little bit about it, but I was hoping maybe you could chat a little bit about maybe your inspiration and how you knew this was the right time to sort of share this story with the world. Uh, well, it, it's it, it was one of those things that I decided, uh, I thought it would be an interesting book to go from unable to walk and suicidal to running marathons. I thought that's quite an interesting story to share. But actually... I was also basically poor at that time. I was bankrupt and I was trying to build myself back up. And I remember thinking to myself, this is not the right time. This is like, you know, 10 years ago. I was like, no, it's not the right time. You know, it was a good idea for the book. I liked it. I liked the title. I liked everything about it. I thought, yeah, this is great. But it wasn't the right time to do it. Um, and I decided once I'd recovered myself, my life, you know, healed all the relationships around me, healed the relationship with myself, um, uh, met a, a partner, got married, uh, you know, bought a house, built companies, built properties, you know, and became a, a man that I was happy to be once again, mm -hmm. uh, but at this time even better than before. Um, then I thought, right, okay, now now's the time to share the story of I've been down very, very low, and now I'm in a really, really great position. And 
if I can help others, then that's the purpose of doing it. So it was um, it, the time was right. And, and I do believe now that the universe provides what you need when you need it. Um, mm -hmm. And that when the student is ready, the teacher will be there uh, and many, many other universal laws. And for me, um, the book came out perfectly. I actually wrote about how to recover from a crisis just as the world was going into COVID-19, into a massive crisis. So throughout that time online, uh, I attracted coaching clients from all over the world. I still do. I get people to contact me every week saying, can you coach me? Can you help me? Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we've we've got yeah well over 65 coaching clients now all around the globe. Um, the book has touched thousands of lives and I'm forever grateful. That's so incredible. Now, how would you, how long would you say sort of from conception of the idea to the book being released to the world, how long did that take the whole process for you? Well, I suppose from the actual like, idea, it was well over 10 years. Uh, I planned my second book to be much, much quicker. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, what I would say is that I had the idea, the timing wasn't right when I had the idea, but I just kept believing, kept believing. And and my wife and I kind of mocked it up and I put it on my vision board, um, you know, as a cover and then we looked at it. And I remember leaving my last corporate role, um, it must have been about four years ago now, left my last, last corporate role under a bit of a cloud, to be honest. I got sacked. <laughs> I got oh, no. sacked in my last corporate role. No, it was fine. It was fine. It wasn't the right <laughs> place for me. And, I wasn't right for them. It just wasn't the right fit at all in any way, shape or form. But it's quite amusing because I got home. I'd only been married six weeks. Uh, and I got home and Emma, Emma put a big sign up saying, congratulations, babe. You know, you've been sad. It's like, great. <laughs> now, now, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do about this bloody book? Because what she's basically <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I think now's the time. You know, now's the time. Now that I was free of all the corporate uh, and I was able to express myself fully, I was in a comfortable financial situation married you know in a good place mm -hmm. uh, I thought yeah now's the time and and so the actual answer to your question is from the moment I really knuckled down and went for it about 12 months um 12 months of, of writing a book you know following a structure um Emma's very very structured my wife so she helped me with a few things where I'm not so structured um <laughs> she helped me with some stuff um and she was like my first editor you know she kind of went through it three four five times or whatever before it ever got to the Hasmark editing team etc etc but it was just a fantastic process and and it's been a it's been a wonderful experience and uh one I'm looking forward to repeating again soon <laughs> yes and us as well <laughs> Now, during that writing process, were there any sort of big barriers that you faced and what did you do to maybe overcome those? Well, I, I do a lot of book coaching now. I coach people on how to write their books. Uh, and I think it's very, very much a lot of people get um, overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did this a few times. I did this a few times as being a, a, a slightly less organized, detailed person. I'm a very much a big picture person. Uh, and I know that about my personality. Um, having done quite a few personality diversity indicators. So I know where I'm strong and I know where my limiters are. So not being a particularly detailed person, I tried during that 10 year period, three or four times to start to write a story. And I got, I even got about three chapters in uh, at one point. But the problem was is that I kept getting distracted or I didn't have enough time. So I would leave it for a couple of months and I'd come back and I'd be like, well, I don't remember what I've written and I don't remember where anything is. And I had to read it almost. Yeah, I, had to spend like, I had to spend like, yeah, a, a few days even just reading through where I was to know what I was going to write. And it was just a mess. It was, a, it was an absolute mess and it was never going to work like that. Um, but thankfully my wife came up with a suggestion that I now use for a structure um, to, um, to coach other people. Uh, and once you break the book down into like bite-sized chunks and you have a plan, you have a structure and a plan and you can really do it, um, you can go away, come back to it and it's still there. Go away and come back to it, it's still mm -hmm. there. And, and that's my second book is almost finished um, in exactly that uh, structure. Uh, and I can leave it alone for a few weeks because I'm busy doing lots of other things and go back to it and it's still there and I can pick it up which is great. And that's going to lead me to do doing a whole series of remixed books. Incredible. And you know what? I love that question. And I love that you're helping people with that because I find that there are so many people that struggle 
with that so much and and writing you think that oh I have all these ideas in my head and I'll just put pen to paper but it's so much more than that and I think a lot of people don't realize that when they go to get started on it yeah it doesn't it doesn't work just sitting down and going right okay I'll sit at the computer and da, 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 da. No, no, no 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 there's a lot of it's like <laughs> it's like decorating you know if you're going to paint a room they mm-hmm. say it's like, you know, was it 80 or 90 percent preparation? And then you get the roller out and putting and it on, yeah. cutting with the brushes. But getting the roller out and cutting in with the brushes, that's actually right in the book. Everything else is the preparation, you know, yep. um, and that's that's how it is. And and lots of people want to wade straight in and go, right, here's all my idea and let's get on with it. But very often they'll lose track and then lose heart. Um, mm-hmm. That's how I coach people. I keep them on track. Um, and because I know how to do it now. Um, and I'm doing it myself more and more and more. Um, yeah, lots of people come to me and ask for my help, which I'm happy to give. So. Absolutely. Now, would you say there was any sort of one big maybe aha moment or exciting thing that helped to lead to the completion of the book and, and wrapping up your story? Uh, probably my wife telling me to get on with it because, because we'd been together. I, I told her about the idea and um, like I said, we'd mocked up covers and all sorts of stuff uh and and it was always floating around in the background pretty much the whole time for our, our relationship it was like i've got this idea i want to write a book and it's it's incredible really how quickly like 10 years can go by mm-hmm. um and uh you know and and although i was recovering my finances and getting you know i was 39 when i was bankrupt and 51 when the book came out uh in the end i'm 52 just turned 52 the other other week um so but yeah, I, I, I don't know if there was any sort of aha or, or moments like that, but there was definitely, you know, moments that I remember, like my wife pretty much saying to me, listen, get on with it now. You know, stop messing about, <laughs> get on with it. And, uh, and and that's good. That's good motivation, really. Uh, you know, and particularly mm-hmm. from, from someone who supports you, understands your story. Um, I think there's uh, there's, there's great um, value in, in solid relationships in anybody's life uh, and being able to, uh, support one another and drive each other on uh, is absolutely vital. And so those little moments about, you know, her putting up that big post that I told you about or her saying to me, look, get a structure, do this. You know, these kind of things were were, were requirements. You know, I needed, mm-hmm. I needed that coaching from her, you know, even though she's not a coach, she just wanted to just say, look, <laughs> there's a few things, you know, and, and there's a, you know, there's a great phrase and I, I, we sort of modify it these days into a much more friendly phase that, alongside a free great man is a great woman right and uh so i would say that uh you know she uh she, she played an instrumental role and i'm very very happy um to be working on the second book and she'll be editing it soon and i might even get her to write it, some of it alongside me but what's this space <laughs> exciting i think it's cool too to step back and look at the project and then you realize that sometimes a lot of those small moments add up to the big moments because there's so many little things that you wouldn't have noticed maybe while it was happening and afterwards it's like wow that made such an impact on the whole process i think it's like it's like anything isn't it it's like building a foundation and then you know how to get to the top of the mountain you know one step at a time absolutely and, you know I, i'm not at the top of the mountain you know as far as i'm concerned i've the, me putting out my book is me at base camp you know that's my life remixes out i'm at base camp and then the next book and then the next book and the next book and the top of the mountain will be when there's a whole series of, of books out now, speaking of the book and its release, you hit international bestseller status, which is absolutely incredible. I would love to chat about that. There it is. It's so beautiful. Um, what was that moment like for you when you found out that your book had reached international bestseller? Oh, it's fantastic. Really, really, really great. I really appreciated all the support from Hasmark. Um, it was uh, it was a fantastic moment. Uh, we, you know, we reached that international bestseller status even though we sold, I don't know, almost a thousand author copies, uh, so we literally those none of those even counted towards the best set of days. We probably could have gone even further up the charts. Um, the uh, that was a fantastic moment, and, I, I, and I'll be honest with you, equally as fantastic is every single time I get a new Amazon review. Uh, we're up to one hundred and thirty-one at the moment. I know exactly. Amazing. We're up to 131, <laughs> thank you. We're up to 131 Amazon reviews at the moment. And every single time I get one, 
even the two star ones. <laughs> 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 I got a couple of two stars. I was like, really? Okay, fine. What book were you reading? You're entitled, to, you're entitled to your opinion. It's a free, it's a free world. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I did have to laugh at those ones and smile at those ones. But the majority are, are five-star reviews and they are from people all over the globe that have just picked up my book and it's relatable for them. Uh, obviously, I've, I've lived my large part of my early life in the music industry and had some fantastic success and great fun, but also some huge challenges and crises that I've had mm-hmm. to overcome. And, and, but, you know, m- maybe other people haven't had that, you know, huge roller coaster that, that I had, but other people might just be having those kind of like bumps in the road, but not understanding why they can't make life kind of work in a good way for themselves, including, you know, around health, wealth, um, you know, and happiness. Uh, and so, you know, it's so good to read those Amazon reviews and be like, yeah, lovely. That's great. I love that. I think that's a difficult thing, too, about releasing a story that is so deeply personal and thinking before it's out to the world, like, will this resonate with people? And it's so validating and wonderful to see that people leave those messages and those reviews because it just goes to show that, like you said, even just a small piece of the story people can relate to. So it's it's a beautiful good. thing sharing our story with the world. Trust me, the first, the few, the last few days before it came out, I was like, "What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. I'm actually going to put this out there, and people are actually going to read it." And like you know, it was kind of yeah, it was it was unnerving a little bit. It was facing the the fear, you know, it was mm-hmm. feeling to do it anyway, and facing the fear uh, and the challenges and stuff like that. Um, however, I'm so pleased that I did it, and um, you know, the early part of the book is okay. It's Mark's story, right? So Mark collapses. Here's all Mark's young, fun, addictions, craziness, um, all the stories around London, clubland and traveling the world and everything else. But then this is how I fixed all of the the issues that I was facing. Many people don't fix these issues or, or don't mm-hmm. even know that they've got the issues or know how to fix them. Um, so I've written this book, you know, to share a bit of my story, of course, but also to help. So it's kind of a mixture of it's, it's a memoir mixed mixed with a, a self development or a self help book. My next books won't be memoirs because I've already written it. Right, it's done. It's out there. It's done now. So all my next <laughs> books will be focused solely on everyone else. You know, the audience. You know, right. You know, what, what have I learned and put these things into practice because they will help change your life. And so every book that I've got lined up now is not. It, it hasn't got a lot of lot to do with me as such. It's very much about what. <laughs> do for the for the audience because i've done that bit now that's done so yeah definitely now after that international bestseller title can you talk to us about i know you mentioned briefly about coaching and writing coaching what other successes have you celebrated since the launch of your book yeah absolutely many i'm Uh, sure (laughs) yeah yeah, a lot yeah um so uh what i would say is the book becomes like almost like your business card uh Mm -hmm. in many ways and um you know, if you want people to know a bit about you or your history or, or how you see the world, then write a book. Um, so I've I've attracted uh, property partners. So I do UK property coaching. Uh, I've got property deals. I've had people that have read my book and come to me going, "I love your ethics. I love how you're seeing the world. I love your 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 message." Mm-hmm. Can we go into business together? You know, so I've got people that wow. like that would like to be, you know, want to become business partners with me. And I've, you know, done my due diligence and gone gone along with it because I feel good about that. And no successful person has ever done it on their own. Uh, it takes a whole mm-hmm. team of people to work together. So um, that's been amazing. And then the coaching, the coaching clients has been fantastic. So we've got, as I say, UK property coaching. So I coach other people to invest on their own. If they want to do that, I invest on my own, but I also invest in groups as well. We do a crowdfund group and stuff like that. Um, So uh, we do that. I do executive leadership coaching, including personality diversity. Um, I um, uh, am highly qualified in leadership. So I've got a fellow Mm -hmm. uh, at the Institute of Leadership and Management. So I go in at high levels in business. At the moment, I'm um, coaching at at Heathrow Airport in a uh, a large company uh, at the airport and and helping them, uh, which is fantastic. And um, we also do 12 Months to Remix Your Life, which is our most popular course, uh, where people get a couple of sessions a month with me um and i just help and guide them through their own challenges in their own 
um, uh, workplace or relationships or whatever it is that, that they would like. And then we do the book writing, the book marketing, and we also do the um, uh, we also do the the goal achievement. So you know it's important. But that's a three month thing, but it's good because it gets people on the right track. You know, ninety days to just flip something if mm -hmm. it's not if it's not working for them. So there's a whole like array of things that we do. Um, and uh, we just started actually in this this month in September. We're just starting uh, a book club. You were born rich, which is the uh, Bob Proctor book that I read after reading The Secret, and Bob really resonating with me from his message. I picked up his first um, book, um, which was also a bestseller. You were born rich, um, and I read it, and I was just like, I was blown away by it. I was just like, wow, this is this guy's amazing, um, and that started my path to you mary kate because obviously <laughs> through uh through, through hasmark um that's how we connected with bob obviously prior to him, his passing uh through peggy uh, and judy so um, it's been a wonderful experience and um lots more to come absolutely so many successes to celebrate now my next question is mostly out of curiosity but i would just like to know if there's anything that you can go back and change in the book would you anything specific no, next question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's, that's an easy that, answer. That's, that's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh, there was actually, my brother actually pulled me up and said, uh, something in there is not quite right. You know, he pulled me up about a couple of things. Uh, uh, so I did go back. Some and, anecdotes. And it's, it's nowadays, yeah, there was a couple of anecdotes that I'd kind of, he, he'd seen from a different angle and, and he told me about it. I was like, oh, sorry, I didn't realise. So I think that's actually... Uh, if I remember correctly, we went back and edited uh, and, and changed it a couple of a couple of times uh, in a couple of places, and then put it. and It's relatively easy to do on Amazon now, so you, <laughs> you, just, you just upload the file, and it's it's there, and you and you reprint from that from the new file. So, so yeah, there was a couple of little things, but but nothing major. Um, I, you know, I spoke to everyone before uh, the book came out. Anyone who was mentioned, I went and saw them and spoke to them about it. Um, I asked them for an endorsement, uh, you know, so they all wrote endorsements at the start of the book and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, no, it, uh, no, no, no. I mean, I actually looked at my um, my kind of strategy document actually last night uh, with a friend of mine because we were looking at, uh, at marketing and things like that. And uh, there was a couple of stories in there that I hadn't mentioned in the book. Um, but they didn't really add that much to the story. You know, they, they wouldn't have added anything much to the story, just another little story. And, and to be fair, although it's the story of, of Mark's life. It's the story of my life, essentially. It's also, again, it's not about me. The majority of the book is not about me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about you. It's about what you yeah. can learn from, you know, and we can all learn from each other. If, it's, if there's anyone Absolutely. out there, if, any, if, if there's anyone out there who says uh, they know everything, uh, including, <laughs> my, including myself, by the way, but if there's anyone out there who says they know everything, probably run away from them. <laughs> Because nobody does, nobody does. So, uh, it's so true. That the angle, the angles that I've learned and the strategies that I've learned work for me. I continue to work for me and have turned me from unhappy, sick, and broke to happy, healthy, and wealthy. So that can only be a good thing, right? That's it. That's your true testament, right there. <laughs> now you've sort of alluded to, chatted a little bit briefly before about some upcoming books. Can you tell us anything about any upcoming projects? Maybe some sneak peeks. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm I'm looking there. Um, <laughs> I can see I've actually got uh, four book covers uh, all out. So I've got Life Remixed wow. and uh, I've got three others and I've actually got another one that we're working on at the moment. So the, the hot off the press news, I say hot off the press, look, I'm going to get it finished. Uh, it will be finished. <laughs> or both, of these, no, both of these will be finished by Christmas, so they won't come out until next March. So it's so hard for the press, you know, six months in advance. But <laughs> essentially, essentially, my next book is going to be called Love Remixed, um, and it's going to be about uh, love, surprisingly. Uh, but it's going to be about <laughs> relationships with yourself uh, and with others, how to improve them, uh, how to – make harmonious and, and better better lives for yourself and everyone else around you. Um, so that's Love Remix. So we'll have Life Remix and Love Remix. Uh, and then we've got a couple more lined up I'm not going to tell you about yet. No, uh, we can keep then, those a secret. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've got, I've got to hold something back. Uh, <laughs> and then we're doing another one, though, um, that is really in the, in the concept phase, but uh, I'm really excited about it, actually. I'm enthused about it because 
uh, it was one of my coaching clients came up with the idea. Um, so we're looking at parenting remixed. Mm. So actually, all the all the and they're all gonna all the clients are gonna input. So oh, it was, it's like a chicken soup for the soul kind of idea, you know, with like, mm-hmm. you know, 15 people like contributing to this book, all sharing their own short stories about parenting, either being a, a different kind of son or daughter or being a different uh, parent or, or, or whatever their take on it is. Um, so I, I really like that idea. I think that's a great idea. And like I said, no one successful ever did it on their own. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's all going to come under the Life Remixed uh, banner. But uh, those are the next two. Incredible. Thank you so much for sharing. And that kind of wraps up our questions for today. So thank you so much for chatting with me. It's been such an amazing conversation. And you have done so many incredible things, had so many successes with your book, and it's just going to keep going up from here. So thank you for everything, Mark. Well, thank you, Mary Kay. And if I say to you, I'm just warming up, uh, yeah. mark my word, I'm just getting going. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. And Life Remix, it's available on Amazon now. So go and get your copy. Um, and be on the lookout for more books from Mark in the future. That's it. There's the cover. It's it's coming soon. Well, uh, the new books are coming soon, but it's also on markwilkinsonofficial.com and on Amazon. So yeah, please do, please do support it. Buy it as a gift, share it with your friends. Uh, I hope it helps. Amazing. Thank you.